So if we start with, I suppose we started with one and then you have to start with one and two, add those and you'll get three. The last two are two and three, give you five. Three and five will give you an eight. Five and eight will give you a thirteen. Eight and thirteen will give you twenty-one. And so on. There we go. So the series goes on. And it is remarkable that it's these numbers, even this size, that occur in nature. I'll show you some pictures of those. So there's something special going on. What is it? It's called the Fibonacci series after a mathematician Italian of around 1200 and we'll come back to him in a little while. And it's got lots of interesting number of properties. When I give talks at schools, um, there's just amazing patterns in here if you add them all up. Um, the sum of those gives six and that gives 11 and so on. There's, there's patterns in the sum and there's patterns in the squares and there's, there's all sorts of lovely things you can play with with numbers. Here's the daisy. Very clear spirals in the middle, 21 and 34 again. So we'll add 34 to our growing list at the top. Here's a sunflower. And if you count the spirals on the outside, because there are sort of different things in the middle happening, if you count the spirals on the outside, in fact, what you can see is there are some spirals here that are quite steep, but then they get lost and the eye picks up another set of spirals. And that's an important one we'll come back to. But on the outside here, it's easier to draw them in. There are 34 in one direction and in the other direction to draw them in and count them, 55 uh, on a sunflower. So that drops in there. And you can tell it had an interesting life, we haven't been counting this. <laughs> Here's a cone flower, which that's an American one, there are some lovely ones in the gardens here. That, that looks quite as colourful, I noticed. That's the most beautiful picture, uh, which I noticed the site has used, and it's, uh, I've got a special copyright on that one, it's given by a photographer in the States. But again, absolutely wonderful colour when you can see the spirals. And again, see one set of spirals here, which then disappears, and the eye takes up another one, and that's an important point here. So um, on those, we, we can get them in flower heads, and then those become the seeds. And the giant sunflower, you can find 55 and 89, and even more on those. In fact, this is sunflower that's uh, grew in my garden, and is on the website for you to see that have fallen out on the journey down. That was it before it. Uh, subject to Virgin Rail, and um, 55 and 89 on it. And again, all the seeds will be the same size then here when it dries out. So Fibonacci, what was he doing playing about these? Did he know about the plants? No, he didn't. He was um, an interesting guy. His father was a customs director in Pisa in Italy when the Mediterranean was the centre of the world. And so he used to go and visit all the Mediterranean ports and find out that the Arabs with their numbers and Indians in a very different way to the Roman system or the tally systems using Roman numerals. And then he found out they, they used ten symbols, not to nine, and had a different way of doing things that was absolutely amazing for doing accounting and representing numbers. It's our digital system. So he wrote about it, but not as they did in the universities at the time in academic Latin, but in the ordinary everyday Italian. So he wrote a book called The Book of Counting, di Abacci, and um, about, in the ordinary language, about the techniques. It's an absolutely amazing book. It's a bit heavy to bring with me. It's just been translated into English um, five years ago, so it's 800 years before we got our English uh, version of it. And it tells you the sorts of things you would now learn in primary school, the methods for adding numbers and subtracting them, of multiplying and dividing, of doing all sorts of other things as well, looking at counting still. coming from a Hindu-Arabic um, background. Now, he lived in Pisa, here in Italy at the top, and so we used to go around here. Um, we think his dates were about 1175 to about 1240 when he died. Um, he's called Leonardo of Pisa, or in Italian Leonardo Pisano, or as he called himself in this book that he wrote, the famous book, um, Fibonacci, which either means lucky son or it means son of the family Bonacci. We're not quite sure what it means, but that tends to be how we refer to him now, Fibonacci. He's Leonardo Fibonacci or Fibonacci for short. And he wrote about a little puzzle in this book um, to do with uh, rabbits, which isn't a very realistic one. Don't confuse him with the other famous Leonardo, who is of Vinci, and he was a good few years later, 200, and 200 years later before he was born, um, and, but he was from Leonardo of Vinci, and Vinci is very close to Pisa mm. in Italy. So we've got him to thank for, because he wrote about this system mainly, and then through this it went throughout Europe, we've got him to thank for the way that we do our arithmetic and write numbers today.